Sometimes life's going to hit you in the head with a brick. Don't lose faith. I'm convinced that the only thing that kept me going was that I loved what I did. You've got to find what you love. And that is as true for work as it is for your lovers. Your work is going to fill a large part of your life. And the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking and don't settle. As with all matters of the heart, you'll know when you find it. And like any great relationship, it just gets better and better as the years roll on. So keep looking. Don't settle. Peace is not merely a distant goal we seek, but the means by which we arrive at that goal. The most influential person in my life is Mr. Kamrisna. The most influential person uh, for me, especially in the education sector, was Paulo Freire. It's going to be um, Ernesto Che Guevara. My father. And it is my father. My parents. The Cambodian spiritual leader, Mams. King Puri Pond of Thailand. Princess Mother. Victims of human rights violations. John Lennon. The indigenous people. All people were equally influenced me. And then I believe that's why I'm here. It isn't enough to talk about peace. Dictatorship region. Like for example, like in Cambodia, like uh, there are two main parties. They try to fight each other. They try to confront with each other in order to maintain their power, in order to get the power. But they simply ignore the vulnerable people. For example, um, the people that they suffer from disaster. Centralizations of the governance system in Myanmar, where the especially in the education sector where there is only one national curriculum uh, which is also written in Burmese language. So this is unrealistic and ineffective policy where the country itself is comprised of multi-linguistics and multi-ethnic city and plural societies. Present economic development paradigm is very problematic because it actually alienates people from each other from their communities and it actually pitted people or groups of people against each other. Times of disaster, whether it's, it's natural or man-made disasters, it's also these sectors, these vulnerable sectors that are always left behind in the decision-making process. There is um, value in looking at the root causes of um, conflict, which is looking at poverty, looking at social development issues that are um, forcing people to take arms and um, rise in conflict uh, with their states. So there is a need for, for, for governments to achieve, um, to be driven towards um, a more positive peace-oriented policy. There's this um, idea that peace is just the absence of war, but actually it's not. It's a lot of, of developmental issues, it's a lot of, of struggles in the community. In Myanmar, I felt civil societies organization face some difficulty which is like a gap between what they're doing on the ground and what government thinking at their higher level. Right now is uh, the climate change is part of the problem uh, in all over the world actually and even though Thailand is uh, really uh, good in the food security however we are still challenging with many kind of issues such as the natural uh, natural resource management. On peace uh, situations in my country, so I think in my countries the lack of trust uh, between the majority ethnic groups, power holders, and like, minority ethnic 
are key obstacles to achieve peace and development and also it leads to ongoing ethnic armed conflict and it leads to ceasefire talks into a deadlock situation. Local people had some needs, authorities always neglect and ignore these needs. So in Cambodia, uh, needs of local people cannot be influenced in the local policy. It was in an urban poor community here in uh, Metro Manila. So we get to see that uh, though there is some form of community peace, we still see that there's domestic violence happening in the households. That is one situation of peace that most people do not look into because primarily it's private, when in fact it's still a situation of violence that we must address. Part of hegemonic masculinity, people have subconsciously accepted that violence against women In the Nepal context, after the conflict ended, there was no, there was no particular um, holistic model of psychosocial um, support, and that perhaps this is, um, perhaps that particular gap in addressing and ending the conflict is something that uh, should be addressed. For instance, how how societies are dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder, how how people in marginalized groups are actually dealing with. Um, lack of resources to, to facilitate their psychosocial healing. The key of the dealing with this issue, I think the first cooperation among civil society and organizations to strengthen the anti-corruption law would be important. So he always said that education can transform all the suffering in my country. Without education, people still look at enemy and then killing will happen again. Though we are able to change the cognition or the knowledge of the people with regard to violence against women, they now understand that there are different kinds of violence happening in the household. The question now is how it will um, further change the behavior. Sustainability seems to change every day, so how people can sustain this idea is one of, uh, one of the challenges I have. The book of the pedagogy of the oppressed really believed me think that the non formal the importance of non formal education and critical thinking are very important to change this, the, the systems of patriarchy and the structural violence and also the social injustice that we have been facing. Well, we didn't really actually solve the problem. The problem is much bigger than what we actually conceptualize. So somehow we don't know exactly the problems or things going on in the community. Because we are students, we just come to the communities, introduce our projects, but for me actually the communities can live without, can live without, without us. So they can they go on with their lives, and suddenly students just go there and introduce their projects. Um, I think one of the things that's actually is a challenge is that how to actually develop uh, this this relationship with your partners, the local organizations, and the communities themselves, and for them to see that this this, this intervention, so called, that you bring into their community. Uh, can actually uh, be part of their everyday lives and they can adopt it and but because we cannot also say that these things are new so I think it's very important for us to go back to the communities do education work do awareness raising uh, know what are the, the, the laws that are actually out there and what's happening to the world you know? we cannot live in our own islands we are very much connected in this global world.